Hello folks, how's it going? Singer-songwriter James Downey here, aka Ree, from West Belfast, and today we're having our first AA meeting in isolation with young Bob and Mr. Jeffrey here. Um, we're going to be talking about being sober in isolation, um, why I became sober, and techniques to maybe help people that are um, facing addictions through Mental Health Week in isolation. Okay, so why did I go sober? Um, there wasn't one mega incident that made me want to go sober. I decided that there was a series of um, incidents in my life that made me think that maybe, possibly, alcohol would be better off taking a back seat. Um, so I tried going sober and realised that my life dramatically improved. Those incidents were um, waking up in a cell, a barrack cell, police station, um, walking around naked, you know, um, under the influence of alcohol, um, waking up in a hospital bed a few times after blacking out from drinking. Um, I would text like ugh, girlfriends or ex-girlfriends all the time. Um, and this wasn't, you know, every night I drank. This would be one in every six to eight times that I would, I, you know, I'd go out three times in a row and I'd be like, this is pretty great. But you could always guarantee that something was going to go wrong between one and eight times or whatever. And um, yeah, all those incidents piled up and I decided maybe life would be better without alcohol. Why not try it? See if you can do it. And I did. And life got dramatically better. How did my life get better? Whenever I went sober, um, like my, my life dramatically improved in all sorts of ways. I was able to maintain a relationship without getting into you know silly arguments when you're drunk. Um, I was able to progress in my career because I could wake up and practice without having a sore head and be hungover. Um, I could get healthier. I would go to the gym. You know, I'm not the biggest person in the world, but I could go to the gym put on a couple of pounds and then whenever I was drinking, you know, whatever small amount of weight that you put on, you would lose whenever I had like three day hangovers, I wasn't eating properly, I was going out and drinking, you know, skipping lunch, yada yada yada, eating kebabs after a night out, just unhealthy. So I was able to concentrate on getting my fitness and my health um, back to normal whenever I stopped drinking. Do I ever get tempted to go back on the drink? To be honest, um, not really, like not in the last year. Um, I, I don't think I've got like a chemical addiction to alcohol or anything. Um, I just, my life's better without it, so I go back on it. But however, within the, six, within the first six to eight months, it definitely was really, really hard. Um, I almost did go back on it because I wasn't sure that I was someone who didn't drink. So, you know, I was gigging at bars. People were offering, offering you like whiskeys and, and like pints. And you had to sort of say like, oh, I know I'm driving or I'm on antibiotics because I wasn't sure of who I was at the time, or if I was someone who was going to be sober for the rest of my life, or if I was just trying it. Um, there was one time I went down to Derry, and I bought a big massive bottle of whiskey, and I left it in my girlfriend's room. We couldn't get access to it for some reason, I think we got locked out, so I didn't end up drinking it that night. And whenever I woke up, I was so glad that I didn't drink it, because she was thrown up, and she was so hungover. People that we were partying with were like um, getting in trouble with security in the... Um, in, in the accommodation because they'd like they punched holes in the wall um, and they were doing they were, they were just walking around being like oh, I'm so tired I'm so hungover and I was I woke up and I looked at my phone and I was like, I'm still a few a few months sober I'm so glad I didn't drink but um yeah at the start it's definitely a lot harder I'd say even within the first week it's harder than the first month and then once you get the first month under your belt that's really hard and you gradually gradually realize that you're someone who doesn't drink and you're more confident in saying it and then when you say it People are more happy to accept it. That's who you are when you say it with confidence. Okay, what advice would I give to someone who is going sober or is struggling with sobriety during isolation? The first technique that I would use, um, I call it catch your thought. Because um, your thoughts and your mind, they try to trick you. Like your addictions, they try to trick you even though you don't realise it. So they trick you in a form of justification. You'll hear yourself go on like, uh, I'll just drink because I've already did it for six months. So I know that I can go off it, so you should go on it now. You know, you've proved to yourself you can go off it, so why not go on it now? And then you'll act instantaneously. So try to catch that thought and you know, cut it out as, as soon as you hear it. Or you know, it might say something like, I can go on traveling, so you know, it's different now. I'm, uh, I'm going and socializing with people that I don't know, so it's okay to have a social drink. Try it without it, like catch that thought. And the second part of, um, second technique that I would give would be wait 48 hours and write it down. So uh, just like what happened to me in Derry, I would say um, like 
whenever you're going to drink, write down, okay, I think I'm going to drink again. Stick it on the fridge or stick it on your back wall, somewhere where you always see it. And the next day, don't drink and wait until the next day. Because if it's worth breaking your sobriety for, it's going to be a big deal, even if it doesn't feel like a big deal at the time. So look at that piece of paper the next day and go, do I still feel it? Feel that way? If you still feel that way, wait another 24 hours. If you don't feel that way, rip up the piece of paper and don't drink. If you do still feel that way, wake up the next morning and go, okay, it's been 48 hours and I feel like I can control it and I can still drink. The thought's been there for a long time. I'm not acting instantaneously and at least wait 48 hours before you make any judgments because you mightn't feel the same way the next day. But um, yeah, isolation, to finish things off, isolation um, can be challenging, it can be lonely, um, it can affect your mental health and you may want to turn to alcohol. So just try to use maybe some techniques um, if you feel like it to, to distract yourself. Um, but isolation is also a time to maybe try being sober. There's no pressure from bars and all the bars are closed, your, your friends aren't asking you to go out and drink. So this could be the perfect time to go, you know what, I want to try not drinking for a day or not drinking for a week or two weeks or up to a month. You, you can use this time to um, try out things that will improve your mental health that you weren't able to do with the pressure of society. So from all of us at the AA meeting in isolation, good luck if you're trying to go sober and good luck if you're not trying to go sober and you're waking up and just have a blast. At least do things in moderation and keep yourself mentally healthy. Overnight.